So Sheena's Pickles uses only fresh, organic, and seasonal produce that is located here in Austin, Texas. She's a farmer's market shopper for sure. Uh, in 2012, Sheena received a pickling kit for her birthday, and with, her, with that, her passion was ignited. Sheena's Pickles was born. Uh, fast forward to 2021, and you can find her wonderful pickles at Antonelli's Cheese Shop. And without further ado, here is Sheena. Hi, everyone. Am I coming in clear? Because I'm like, I'm looking at two different screens, my screen and, and of course, this uh, these jars here. Um, so thank you all for coming. I am, I'm going to call myself the rebel of the fermentation um, because we're, we're actually going to talk more about pickling and how it's a great tool to use. Um, to preserve your food. So, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about pickling is you can pickle a lot of vegetables at the same time. Um, so what I'm gonna pickle or demonstrate for you guys today um, is what we call pickled jalapenos or escabiche Mexican style pickles. Um, so we're gonna have some carrots, we're gonna have some jalapenos, we're gonna have some onions. Um, so we're gonna talk about um, a lot of different things today. So first and foremost, there's always that question when you're pickling, I'm worried about I'm worried about botulism. That's like the ongoing conversation all the time. Um, everything that I show you here, you, you can safely can in your house. Um, these foods are high acidic food, and if they're not, we're going to add vinegar to bring them there. Um, now, the only one that's like straddling the line between if you should water bath can it, which is the process I'm about to show, or pressurize cook it and pressurized cooking takes the temperature almost up to like a little bit past 275 degrees. And that kills all the bacteria, bacteria that can potentially grow in a jar. And that's going to be tomatoes. So you're rarely gonna see me use tomatoes. It's, it's, a, it's a weird fruit to work with. Um, I, I would add like lemon juice to a batch of um, pickled or, or stewed tomatoes and then pressurized cook it. But for today, we're just going to work with our usual fruits and vegetables, carrots, um, and we're going to use a, a vinegar-based brine. So before you get started, there's some, some tools that you, you guys need to, to know or to have. Um, so first, everyone's favorite, these lovely mason jars. Um, I, I almost cringe when I see them being used and they're not being pickled in. Um, but there is a jar shortage. So if you happen to go into your local HEB and you're like, where are all the jars? Due to COVID, there is a jar shortage. So finding them is very challenging. You can, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to pack your vegetables in this jar and then we're going to pour hot brine over, over it. And I'll walk you guys through it. I'm going to do it as well. Um, you can reuse your jars. So the jars are reusable. Um, they are made out of glass, so each time you reuse it, you want to make sure and inspect your jar for cracks. Um, the last thing you want to do is pack your delicious product in a jar and go in to make sure it seals properly and there's a crack and it bursts everywhere. So always when you're using jars, just take a look at it and make sure there's no cracks. The next thing you're going to have that comes on the jar or you can buy separately are the rings and the lids. The lids, so this little component is not reusable. Once you use it and you eat your product and you put it in the refrigerator, blah, blah, you cannot use this again to make a new batch of pickles. It won't work. So you, you throw this away and you can reuse the ring as long as it doesn't rust out on you. And you're gonna notice when it rusts because it's gonna turn that weird brown color. So these are your, some of your tools. The next thing you're gonna have, and if you really wanna get into pickling, I would recommend that you get this. This is a jar lifter, and this is from ball canning, and it allows you to take your jar in and out of hot water. The water will get up to anywhere, probably 150 to 180 degrees, because it's gonna be boiling water, and we'll talk about that but you definitely cannot and should not stick your hand in boiling water to retrieve your jars. So this jar lifter is really nice and really handy. We also have the funnel. 
One of the things about pickling is it can get kind of messy as you're packing in your jars. And this funnel helps everything go into your jar pretty nicely. Um, it comes in different styles. So this is the stainless steel. Um, if you buy a pickling kit, it's going to come most likely a plastic, like a hard plastic, and that's fine. Um, but I, I, I pickle a lot, so I use the stainless steel. And then you want a ladle again, because once we pack all of our good product in there, we put the funnel on, we're gonna ladle the hot brine right on top. Um, and so this will keep your hands and everything free from feeling the heat that should come from it. All right, so I'm sure some of you guys have been reading or watching. How do you, how do, you do home canning? How do you do it? How do you pickle at home? Um, so when I go out to Antonelli's, I use a huge, big canner, electric canner. Um, but before I started really getting into pickling, I started off very small. This is your average pot um, that most of us have in any, um, any set that we've ever gotten. Um, so I started off with one of these, and this is a silicone um, trivet. And I got these from HEB, and these are heat safe, you can use them, not a problem. So what you wanna do is you wanna place it into the bottom of your pot. Unless you have like a professional canner um, that has like a rack at the bottom, then this is gonna be your next best option. It's the cheapest option, it's the easiest option, and it doesn't, you know, you don't wanna spend a lot of money if you're, if you're really starting out. So you put the little silicone trivet right down in there, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna load your jar up right on top of that trivet. So the thing you wanna be mindful of is to make sure that those jars are staying on that silicone trivet because this pot is gonna be full of hot water and you don't want your jars breaking because they are glass. So you will fill it up with hot water all the way until you slightly cover the top of the jars, okay? And so then what you would do is you take it to your stove, and this is my stove top, and I already have um, some of the jars in a different pot. And you're gonna bring this pot up to a boil. Your jars, and the reason you're doing that is because your jars need to be sterilized. These jars come packaged in a little box. Um, there's no way of knowing how long they've been on the store shelves. And to make sure that all your product is as clean and as safe, you're actually going to sterilize your jar. So in this case, sterilizing means you can bring it up to a boil with water. I even add a little bit of vinegar and you boil it for about 10 minutes. And that should safely sterilize your jar. You're gonna read things on the internet on Pinterest that's like, um, you know, you can put it in the dishwasher, you can put it in the up. No, it has to be on the stove top or an, an electric canner, um, which you can buy, and it has to boil for at least 10 minutes to be sterilized. So now to the fun part. So once you get all of your, your jars ready, um, the next thing you wanna do is, what are you gonna pickle? So that are great to pickle, cucumbers, green beans, carrots, onions, all of those, a combination. Um, you can even pickle fruit. Um, so when I was at the farmer's market, a lot of people were surprised that most people think of fruit with jams or jellies, but fruit actually, um, they just don't get the same type of attention that fruits do. All right, so I spent the evening cutting up some vegetables. So if you guys can see, I have carrots in here, onions in here, red onions, uh, jalapenos, got it from my local farmer's market, a little minced garlic, and some radishes in here. Um, and I just mix these all together. I cut them and put them in the bowl. Um, some recipes for pickles um, will, you know, require that the pickles, for instance, the cucumbers sit overnight. Um, when you're pickling, just make sure that you're using um, a recipe from a reliable source. 
I really like um, ball canning recipes. There, there's a pretty solid, obviously. Um, and there's a great um, blogger um, writer and her website is called Food in Jars. And she does a really excellent job of walking you through the canning process as well. So, so I have my, my vegetables here. And so you're like, well, what do I, how do I pour the brine? What is the brine? And so the brine is actually the acid. It's actually a vinegar based acid. Um, and so I use vinegar of at least 5%. Um, anything lower than that won't be able to, it's not strong enough to potentially kill any potential germs or bacteria that can grow in your, in your food. So you wanna use 5%. You can mix vinegars. So for this recipe, we're gonna use two vinegars, a white vinegar at 5% and an apple cider vinegar. Um, you can potentially use rice vinegar, but you need to have some other vinegar that's at least 5% um, just so it's, you know, it's, it's, it can be shelf stable and you know, nothing gross or icky will grow on it. So how do I create my brine? So we are making, like I said, a, uh, a vinegar-based brine with four cups, I'm sorry, eight cups of uh, apple cider vinegar, eight cups of white distilled vinegar at 5%. We have one tablespoon of um, thyme and then a half a teaspoon of oregano. So, so you guys have that. So what you're gonna do with this is, let's see if I can find it. Let's use our pot here. So you would take another pot. So we would take this one. You would add your eight cups of vinegar. You would add your eight cups of apple cider vinegar. You would pour in all of your oregano and your thyme. And then the one ingredient that really helps your vegetables stay crunchy for longer is pickling salt. Not your regular Morton salt. This is your pickling salt. So this guy can be found on the same aisle that you get ice cream salt. So one of the, the drawbacks of using vinegar is, and using heat and pickling, is it does make your product go weaker. So people do complain, oh, my cucumbers are kind of soggy or this, and it's either because the, the vinegar to um, salt ratio is off or um, you're not using the right salt. So you definitely want to use pickling salt. So here I have half a cup of pickling salt. So that goes straight into the, the pot with our, our, our vinegar and with our seasonings. And then I bring this up to a boil and I boil it until all the salt has dissolved. And that's kind of how you know it's ready. When the salt has dissolved, then you know it's ready. So then now that we have, we've sterilized the jars, we've cut up our vegetables, now we pack our jars, okay? And so behind me, this, this dude has been going well before we started talking, um, but I, I had hot water, I brought the jars up to a boil for 10 minutes, and now I'm taking them out. Steam coming from that. Pour out the water. So as you can see, all the water is poured out. And now the jars are extremely hot, of course, so be careful as you're packing it. Um, but I'm also going to use, because I have jalapenos in my vegetable mix. And when you're working with jalapeno. So I'm gonna show you guys how to pack it, the brine, and then also how to remove the air bubbles 
to ensure that there's not anything in there that would break your jar. I'm using my funnel, I'll do it like this. And now I'm going to pack the cucumber solution. <laughs> and jalapenos. So if you guys see it, it's in there packed pretty nicely. And I'll put it over here. Unless Okay, so when you're packing the jars, you wanna make sure the vegetables are in there pretty nicely. Let's see if I turn it this way. Um, because the next step is uh, to pour on the brine. And as you can see on this lid, you want to overfill your jar because one, you still have to put the lid on here. And number two, process the jars. And what that means is you're actually so no air should be able to um, that's kind of what makes it a little bit similar to fermentation. You don't want any air being exposed to it. The only thing is with pickling, we're using heat to kill off a lot of that um, a lot of the things that could potentially grow in the jar. So I have made my brine. And again, this has the thyme, the oregano, the two vinegars, apple and white, and the pickling salt. And then take my funnel and And I'm leaving about a half inch from the top for like bears. So I'm just I'm just making sure that the fruit is covered in liquid. I'm not with the jar because there has to be a place again for the lid to sit for that expand once we process it. Again, leaving some headspace. So I'm gonna walk it up to you guys a little bit so you can kind of see the liquid in there. So let me bring it to this camera. So then it's beautiful. Hope you guys can see that it's beautiful. So one of the things is as we're pouring that liquid in there, packed really tight, there's air bubbles in here, right? You may not be able to see it, but there are air bubbles. The jar is packed so tight and now we pour liquid on. Now, if I don't remove these air bubbles, when we finally do the last portion to process these jars, those air bubbles will expand and they will potentially, can potentially crack the jar. So we have to release those air bubbles before we do anything else. So most of us at home, chopstick um, or something plastic to help us remove the air bubbles, you do not want to use anything metal. Do not slip a knife to release the air bubbles because that metal can hit the glass. And again, it could crack your jar. So the thing is to protect, protect your jar at all costs. So walk this up. So you take it 
And then you're going to stick, I have a chopstick and you are going to stick it as far down all around and you're gonna start seeing these little air bubbles pop up, right? So you wanna remove as much as possible and you're gonna start seeing them like really come up. And if you have to, if, you're, if your vegetables no longer feel like they're submerged in the vinegar, then you can add a little bit to top it off. I think I did pretty good with this one. I think they're all pretty good. So I released the air bubble out of that one. And then again, same thing. You're gonna remove the air bubbles, moving that stick or that chopstick or even your um, bubble uh, releaser. And then again, just ensure that your product is submerged in vinegar, okay? So everything looks good. We packed the jars. We've kept our, our lids pretty nice and clean. Um, and we released the air, the air bubbles. So what I like to do is I take a little bit of water from when I was uh, sterilizing the jars and I just make sure I wipe the mouth of the lid off. Sometimes you'll get um, vinegar, sometimes you'll get vegetables. If you're working with something, like if you're pickling something that has a sugar in it, the sugar can get really sticky. So you just want to make sure you wipe the mouth of the jars off. And I'm just using a paper towel and I dipped it in, into the little hot water and I'm just wiping the mouth. Okay. So next comes our lid, a clean brand new lid each time. So the lids have an interesting story. So maybe about two years ago, Ball changed how their lids work. It used to be that you had to gently warm up. So this little, I'm sorry, this little brown part is actually the, the adhesive. This is what actually sticks the jar to the lid. And so a long time ago, Ball had where you had to lightly simmer the lid separately to warm up this little brown part. Now you no longer do that. In fact, if you warm these up, it will ruin the adhesive. So all you do now is you make sure you clean it with warm soapy water, let it dry, and then you can use it. That's it, which is kind of nice. It's one less process. So you put the, the lid. I have one for this one. You put the lids on the jar with their rings. And you see how I'm not super tight with it. I can actually remove this band pretty easily. You want it snug enough where you can move it with your fingertips, but not so tight where you're just struggling. So just a nice, nice little tightness. And again, same one with this one. Okay, so you have, you have that. So now you can use the same water that you use to sterilize them because that water is still hot. It's still ready to go. And so you put them back into the, that water. And you bring this up to a boil boil not like crazy but to a nice rolling boil and you let the jars process for 10 minutes after 10 minutes you remove it and you can put it on a on a towel uh, on a countertop and let is you're going to know that a jar properly sealed if when you touch the middle of that lid, it doesn't make that sound. That probably means that your lid did not seal properly to your jar. So you have options. You can, you know, you can just take it, put it in the refrigerator, know that you have to eat it within a few days, um, or you can throw it out, or you can reprocess it, which is a, a whole different step, but you know, if you start hearing this, that probably means that your lid is not properly sealed. But if you touch the lid and you hear nothing, 
like it doesn't click back on you, you have a good seal. And so most products that are pickled, um, their shelf life is up to a year. And when I mean up to the year, you're gonna still get that beautiful color. You're gonna still get the delicious flavor. And then after a year, maybe the color will change. Maybe the flavor will change slightly, um, but the shelf life is pretty long for pickled items. All right, so do we have any questions? <laughs> Well, Sheena, I will um, field one of the questions over to you that someone dropped into the chat. Um, and a reminder to everyone, if you have questions, drop your name into the chat and we can unmute you. Um, or if you don't want to talk, but you um, do have questions, just drop those into the chat as well and we can get those over to Sheena. So. Um, uh, a viewer asked on sterilization, the, there's a couple questions coming in about sterilization. Um, oh. One is the silicone piece does not cover the pot bottom, yet you said the jars should not touch the bottom. Some of them would be part of the square yeah. uh, of, of the silicone and part on the bottom. Is the, Does that work? Is that a problem? And then someone yeah. also asked, do we need to sterilize the lids and the ring? No, you don't need to sterilize the lids and the rings. Um, the lids, like I said, are only one time. So you'll, you'll actually take the, the, uh, the lids out of their box. So this is a box. Um, and wash these with warm, soapy water. Put them on a kitchen, let them dry. And then you can just start using them. You don't have to heat them. You don't have to put any vinegar on them. Nothing, you just want. Now for the silicone box, yes, some of the lids may kind of kind of go off of the silicone a little bit. You just don't, you just don't want to have any, nothing in there. Like you don't want to sit your jars on the bottom of the metal. So you just want something, some type of barrier. You can actually get um, canning racks it's really hard to find canning racks and 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 a you know pot for a pot like this at home, um, but you can buy a canning rack, and sometimes those will sit very nicely at the bottom of a pot, and then you can add your jars. So you just want some, you just want a barrier between the metal and the jars. So does that make sense? That totally that totally makes sense. Um, Someone, another person asked, what kit would you recommend a beginner to get started? Ooh, so I think all beginners should buy, if you just type in a Google search, like pickling kit, it's going to come up with a kit that has all these little tools. So I find like having the right tools make it a lot easier. And um, any book, like, um, let me think. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll come back with Nora with some books, but any books that kind of walk you through the canning process, I, I found that was helpful. Any YouTube video, um, you kind of just want to take your time with it. The one thing that's really nice about working with vinegar is, so one of the things that you always want to do is like, as you're making your brine, taste it, right? You want to make sure that adjust. Do I need to add more salt? Do I need to add more spices? Do that. Um, and so the one thing that I did was I had like a recipe, um, a really basic, here's how you make sour pickles. And I just followed it step by step until I could figure out, you know, what worked for me, profiles, understand. I may want to make pickled cucumbers. Cucumbers are not in season. So, okay, I like beets. How do I make beets? So I think it's really be patient with yourself. Work on like that brine and getting the flavor pro profile how you like it. Um, and just remember like certain ingredients, for instance, dill, a little bit of dill goes a long way. So... I agree. That's that's a perfect way to describe dill. A little bit of dill goes a long way for sure. 
Um, we had another person who asked, um, I know that your focus is more on vinegar pickles, but for those who are interested in um, doing more fermented pickles, if you had any resources you could recommend. Yes, the Bible of fermentation is the art of fermentation. It is, I have it somewhere. It's a huge book. And he about um, wild fermentations um, and how to, you know, how to ferment, how to control the temperature in your kimchi. Um, I really found that book to be extremely helpful and really fermentation is the more you do it such a um it's the, you know once that the vegetables you i mean once once it starts you have no control over it so once you finally get your recipe down you know really consistency i think having consistency and in, in fermentation is the hardest part and then you know knowing how to store it once it gets as sour as funky as you want it um and so that that's a great resource is the art of fermentation i really like it great recommendation and i plugged in the link to um, that book for bookshop sandor cats is a past fermentation festival presenters. So um, know that you uh, are in good hands for sure. Um, someone else asked with the leftover brine after you uh, eat all the pickles, can you use that for anything? Can you reuse it to quick pickle something or should you just throw it out? You know what, I'm not sure if other people are having this issue. Sheena, I think you might be uh, breaking up a little bit. Maybe we should try just doing one camera. Would that maybe put less pressure on? Maybe not. We'll keep, we'll keep going, but. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, you sound okay. good. Okay, so, um, so yes, you can use the brine. Um, you can use quick pickle where you can use the brine for refrigerator pickles. Um, you know, I've used the brine for things like, um, you can use it for a martini that all, um, especially with like a basic, you know, like a dill pickle brine, you'll strain off all the, the spices. Um, so yeah, the brine can be used for a number of different things. Um, about it. Awesome. And uh, someone else asked, how long do you typically let the, um, the things pickle before you open the can and eat them? I know it's hard to, to let them rest. <laughs> okay. On average, four to six weeks. So a whole month. Um, and what I do is it's hard to keep track of what you pickle. So once the jars have cooled, um, what I do, the date that I've made them, before I put them in my cabinet. And then, you know, I know when I go back in my cabinet a month from then or six weeks from then um, that they're good to eat. Now, the longer they sit, like certain things that sit a little bit longer, taste a little bit better. Like for instance, I make brandy pears. The longer they sit, the better they taste. Um, so, I mean, but yeah, on average, it's about four to six weeks. Does anyone else have any more questions to drop in the chat? Um, I, I'll ask. I'll ask Sheena. Um, what is your favorite season to pickle in? You know, since you're so focused on um, seasonal vegetables, what's your what's your favorite season to focus on? Ooh, I like. I think I really go hard spring and summer. I mean, I love cucumbers and I love just you know cucumber, spicy pickles, dill pickles. So I go pretty hard on the pickling cucumbers. Um, and that's, I think, you know, when people are making, you know, pickles as in cucumber pickles, you know, they may run to the grocery store and they grab, you know, the really pretty shiny waxy cucumbers. Those are actually really bad to pickle with. Um, and, There is a type of cucumber and usually you can only find it at the farmer's market. 
sorry, my, is my internet still breaking up? Um, you can only find it at the farmer's market. Um, and it, they're kind of rough and you cut off the ends because there's an enzyme that happens at the ends of a cucumber that can make it go weaker. And so you cut off the ends and you can make them into spears, you can make them into rounds and they are absolutely perfect to pickle with. They most likely keep their crunch, um, the pickling. Kirby cucumbers are, um, cucumbers the same as the Persian cucumbers. So I know the, the little bitty ones um, are not the perfect ones. I don't know about the Kirby. So that's a good question, Mike. Do we have any any more any more questions uh, to drop in the chat for Sheena? Speak now. Otherwise, Sheena, if people have questions for you in the future or they want to take another class with you, um, where can they find out more information about Sheena's Pickles? So I have a website. So my website is sheenaspickles.com. And you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook. It's all under Sheena's Pickles. I'm pretty good about <laughs> responding to messages. So you can direct message me, leave me a comment, a chat. Um, you know, so I'm pretty available. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this presentation, Sheena. I know we're getting lots of great uh, comments in the chat saying people are inspired to make their pickles now. So Thank you so much for taking the time to lead this workshop and uh, everyone have a wonderful evening and enjoy pickling with the seasonal bounty. Thanks everyone. <laughs>